I've got here the uh, the black cars windshield wiper motor. I've refurbed Dorothy's windshield wiper motor, and I've made some mistakes. So there uh, may be some weird editing going on here. So if uh, it seems a little disjointed as I go through this windshield wiper motor, that's why because I did that work, kind of uh, made some mistakes. Nothing nothing critical, but made some mistakes, and they're now using the black motors to try to try to fix that a little bit for me. And I'll uh, walk you through as I go. First off, as, as usual with this stuff, it was, uh, there's a little bit of it's, uh, aluminum corrosion and stuff like that. That white, chalky, almost yellowish stuff that you see there. And I've got my grinding, my bench grinder here. And this is a brass wheel, so that's going to be nice and soft. And the aluminum will not get scored up and nasty because of that. And I'm just going to lightly go around and clean all this stuff. Now some of it, if you can see in there, all that white stuff in there a lot, there's a lot of residual grease. So I'm going to use some degreaser and everything to clean that out. Probably not going to be able to get the, the wire wheel on most of this stuff. There's also kind of like a spring spider thing going on in there. I don't really uh, want to mess with that at all because that looks like once that comes out, that's not going to come back in because if you can see those hole punches there, that's, um, that's in there. So I don't want to take the chance of messing that up. But otherwise, time to clean it up. Safety glasses and gloves, of course. That's about the extent that I can get with the, the brush on the, on the wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and hand do everything else from here on out. My intention is not to polish this thing by any means, just uh, as you get a little close in some points, you're going to polish it up and make it a little bit more shiny than others, like here. But uh, yeah, get it cleaned up and, and start putting it back together. What you see here is the rotor for the windshield wiper motor. It's in the vise, protected by a cloth so I don't crush anything. This is the commutator portion, that's what allows the, the motor to work. If you want uh, motor theory, I'm sure there's a lot of YouTube videos on that. But I'm just going to scuff it up. I got a thousand grit sandpaper here. Commentator should be kept relatively clean. I just got a little strip of it and I'm just going to kind of go around. Not really trying to take a lot of metal off. Just trying to get it cleaned up. Alright, that should be good enough. Again, I'm not... Uh, not incredibly concerned, just nice and kind of shiny. So here, this is just magnetic field. You don't, there's no electrical connection here, but there is actual electrical connections. The brushes ride on the commutator, but on the rotor itself, that's all magnetic, so it doesn't matter if that's dirty and nasty or not. Not always the best at recording stuff where everything went and all that, but thankfully the workshop manual for the Triumph that I have here is really, really good. But I got all the pieces parts here arranged and I'm going to start putting it back together and uh, slowly but surely here we'll try to make this work and then test it. So the first thing we're going to do is put the gear in. Just uh, there's, a, there's a brash bushing in here. Looks good enough for, for me. That'll roll that. And then on the bottom here there's a washer and a little circlip that goes on there to keep that captured in there. So we'll put that guy on. Just a regular whole washer under there and just a little little C clip not much to that all right just slide that on so now that's clipped in got a little spacer here a little guy that goes on top of there and then the rod connecting rod goes on top of there remember you got to get it in that channel And then on top of that connecting rod, we start to have some electrical connections. This is going to go up and touch on the, um, where is it? There it is. This is the uh, parking brake. I'm not really sure electrically how this works yet, outside of the fact that you can see that it's got electrical here, and then this is just like a cardboard. So as that thing comes across in the in windshield wiper, this is going to turn with the motor here. So that fits on like that. And as the motor turns, you can see that that rotates around. When you turn the windshield wiper off, it's going to continue to 
electrically run until it hits that spot where there's no more copper and then it'll park itself in between those two positions and I got to clean that up alright so that's relatively cleaned up so we'll put this guy on so that the little tab faces inward and that's got a little locking clip here let's see what's it called properly sir clip so we call that the thing that it should be and that's going to fit in there alright and if you can see try to zoom it in there the sir clip fits with that little there's a little tab sticking up there I don't know how well you can see that I'm half blind anymore from getting old so it's hard for me to see the camera all the time but that's the sir clip runs into that and kind of keeps that positioned it's pretty much the internals here of the of the thing are complete this is going to sit on top like this now we'll put together the motor itself so the motor again I already cleaned up the commutator and here's all my brushes and all that kind of stuff now this is gets a little tricky there's a little itty bitty spring in here and the little tensioners and all that this would definitely be a good time this is all paper so you don't want to break this this you got to be very gentle in here and it sets up a spring for the brush tension on on this guy this is obviously the coil the stator of the motor so we're going to set that up real quick so this is a little tricky so you got your brush assembly got these two little pieces of paper here and they're going to fit like that and like that you can see how that kind of goes and then the spring one end in one side here keep some tension on that one end in the other side here like that the spring is obviously going to keep this all together so now we'll try to get it on the body or on the motor without making it fly apart this is the stator here so the rotor is going to fit in there so you want the brushes to come across so the brushes are going to kind of go in the opposite direction of your electrical connections and then these if you can see how those are kind of curved there that's where the brushes or excuse me the, the little feet of the brushes are going to ride on little notches they fit in the little notches and it essentially goes like that so now the brushes are touching each other and then you've got this plastic piece here the more paper and that kind of fits down into here kind of like that provides a little bit of tension I, I suppose I'm not exactly sure what that's for maybe some electrical protection so now we'll mount the stator in to the body if you look close to the, the body here of the of the motor housing you kind of a little bit of further distance this way than there is this way so this is handed for lack of a better way to put it so you need to make sure that you're going in the right direction the end cap is going to go on the end where the holes are further away I may or may not have just put that on back backwards so the electrical connections and everything like that are going to go out that side all right nice and snug you don't have to go real tight I did put a very little bit of grease in the motor end housing there so we'll slide the motor through open up the brushes so that the commutator can come through there make sure the brushes ride on the commutator and then the electrical connectors and all that are going to come through these gaps and obviously the bearing is going to hold the motor so you make sure you line that up all right slide the motor in so now that's uh, essentially aligned a couple really long screws go through there go through there and then the other side of the motor housing here so you rotate this like this slide that in that gear is going to impact with the uh, the rotor there and we'll go ahead and we'll tighten these screws down all right so the electrical end of that guy is done you also have a screw that goes into here and just essentially it's going to contact the end and I think all that's really doing is preventing the motor from going back and forth too much as it rotates so when you bottom that out it doesn't quite touch but I think because the motor is on a screw the motor is going to want to tend to screw itself in and I think that just prevents uh, too much 
motion that way on the uh, on the motor and just keeps it lined up. What I'm going to do now is put a whole bunch of grease in there to uh, provide it some lubrication. But now what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up electrically, at least I hope. And I don't know, like I said, I'm not real convinced that I understand how this thing works, but I shouldn't need it to run it because it doesn't really have anything to do with the motor itself. It just uh, goes back and connects somewhere. i got to figure that out. Another thing I got a toy here, this is a TAC Life constant voltage or constant current power supply, bench power supply. I think it goes up to like 20 some odd volts. I don't remember how many amps. It's not incredibly powerful, but it's more than enough to simulate the electrical system of the car. And again, TAC Life, it's the same guys I got that lamp from that I really like. It's like, uh, you know, just a little bit better than, than the normal Chinese stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up for 12 volts, connect it electrically here. Turn it on, set for 12 volts and 1 amp, and I don't know how many amps this thing will take, so I don't want to turn it on too much. So hopefully if this works, what I'm going to try to do is I'll turn on the output, it'll power it up, and then just slowly come up on the amperage and see if I can get the thing to turn. Alright, epic fail. Either it's broken and it doesn't work, or I don't understand how to hook it up electronically. My guess is probably the latter. So what I'm going to do is put it back together anyway and uh, and get it mounted to the car because it'll stay clean over there so the the uh, stop the parking stop goes inside that cover there's two little uh, locating clips on that you can see where it's sprung loaded there spring loaded there for the uh, little commutator or the little feeler arm that's in there put this together all right, so the, what goes in this hole here is the actual, the actual wiper stuff. There's the end of it. I'll uh, get cleaned up here a little bit, and I'll show you how this kind of goes together. This thing is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And there's, a, there's measurements and things in the workshop manual that I haven't really touched on at all. So don't use this as the, the exact way to rebuild the starter motor is mainly just cleaning it up and putting it back together to make sure it works and uh, just kind of disjointedly moving along here but uh, I'll show you how it kind of mounts on the car as you have the bracket here this bolts through these four holes in the car and then these three holes here align with the three holes on the bottom of the wiper motor housing and in between those is this grommet now this is one piece I refuse to believe that they expect me to squeeze that one piece through that hole I don't know this for a fact, and I could be breaking stuff here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half at that seam and then go from either end of it. You've got flat washer here, and you've got a flat washer that will go on the other side, and then in between this was going to what holds in between that hole. So I'm not really worried about this thing losing uh, its ability to hold, but I just I, I can't see you squeezing that through there. No way, and it's pretty pretty stiff too. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a regular hacksaw braid, blade and cut those in half. I'll get it on the car. And these are the mounting brackets. It goes like this with the motor facing outward. All right, there's that. I'm gonna get the nasty workbench cleaned up here. Then I'll show you how the actual wiper uh, portion of it works. So these are the windshield wi wiper boxes. So on this end, this portion right here, that's what connects to that little arm that I replaced that goes in and out. And essentially all that does is make this thing go in and out. Now if you look close, you can see where there's a spiral. That acts as a screw. That, would be, that spiral would be like the, uh, the threads of a screw. So as that tube, this whole long wire thing is all inside of these tubes and, and bottoms out all the way down here, as the wiper motor moves that in and out, 
there's threading on the inside of these wiper boxes that act as a gear and they interface with the threads of this rod and as the rod goes in and out it rotates the gears inside of here so I'll open this up real quick and show you what that what that looks like now this is the back of the wiper box and you can see that there's this round piece in here that's interfacing up here with the uh, with that cable that runs through so I'll take this part get that whole thing apart and then be able to show you the whole thing so now I'm running the cable back and forth through the thing and you can see how that's causing that piece to turn and that's all it does is it just goes back and forth and that causes the windshield wipers to turn so I don't know if modern cars still do it that way but I'll tell you that's pretty slick as far as I'm concerned but you can see that there's grease is all nasty and old and everything like that so I'm gonna get this all taken apart and get it in a bin here and put it in some purple power and get it let it soak to get it cleaned up got the wiper boxes here I took them apart cleaned it all up tried to get a lot of that grease out of there also this thing which is the the actual screw I guess you could call it I'm sure there's a better name for it got that cleaned up tried to get all the old grease out of that that was kind of painful I used uh, purple power and carb cleaner and even uh, took the brass wheel to it just to get uh, most of the way cleaned up. I'm not going for perfection there. So now I'll put it all back together, get it greased up, and uh, it'll be ready for, uh, it'll be ready to go. A little tricky to get this all threaded on. You gotta, you gotta think ahead. So this is the end that's gonna go towards the motor. So that's gonna come out of here like this. Well, on this tube right here, this transitions into the body, into the interior. So of course you've got to have a grommet on that. Much, much easier to fit the grommet over this small end than it is over this end, obviously. So you want to thread that grommet first. So you got that on there. Then you need to start threading the wire through. Hit your first box here. And there is a little flared end on here. On each one of the tubes there's a little flared end. And then in each one of the boxes, there's little slots right there on either side of the wheel, on the top and the bottom of the wheel. That's where those little uh, flared ends fit in. And I'm going to thread the wheel box on just as if I am putting it on the car. So the wheel box kind of gets locked into the flare there. Then I've got the other tube. This is a little bit longer of a straight tube. You can flare that on, slide that on, excuse me, and get it into the um, wheel box and then you can put the screws on if you want and I'll do that real quick all right so that looks good take the other wheel box thread that guy all the way on now this is another little tube and this one's aluminum I don't know, guess they were trying to save weight all the other ones are steel get that guy on there cap on screw it down and then when they sit there and they run, this runs back and forth inside and out. And I don't know how well, if you can see it on the camera, but now the windshield wipers would be turning. So like I said, this is the windshield wiper motor for the black car. This is the old style windshield wiper motor. The newer cars, and I don't remember when they changed it over, but the newer Spitfires, the, the motor housing here, instead of being square like this, will be round. And that's because they changed the design of the motor. This is an electromagnetic motor where the, um, the newer ones it uses a permanent magnet. So you'll notice this wire going into here. That's one of the things that I messed up. And this is for the brake underneath of this is a little cap. I showed you that in the, in the uh, Dorothy's taking that one apart. So I've got to fix that. I may clean the cap up or whatever. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. The other thing that I missed is this little electrical connection here. And I don't, uh, I don't have any idea what I did with it. And I also need to test the motor. So I'm going to try to get this hooked up to the bench, see if I can test it appropriately. Got to look at the wiring diagram and make sure I understand what's going on. And if, if, if this will work for me, because Dorothy's didn't, because I obviously didn't have it up wired right, um, I'll continue on from there. Workshop manual here. This is section six, which is electrical stuff. Gives you a little bit of information about the, the wind screen wiper motor. Uh, looks like it's about, uh, about 3 amps or so this thing will run at. 
light running current is what it says, 2.7 to 3.4 amps. And uh, obviously it's a 12 volt uh, motor. So I'm going to hook up, I got this uh, nifty power supply here that I probably already showed you. I'm going to hook that up for 12 volts and about 3 amps there. And then um, I've got some wiring here that I don't know if it's correct, but I'm going to give it a shot. So we'll start at the low end. We'll start at 2 amps instead of uh, 3 amps just in case. Alright, nothing yet. Alright, well I got lucky there. So again, this is running at only 2 amps. Meter here is going in and out. I can crank up the amperage a little bit. And that's essentially how that works. Now when you turn it off, it's going to turn off immediately here because unlike on the car, I just cut the voltage off completely with this power supply. On the car, you're still going to have some voltage applied and that's how the braking thing works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal some parts from this. First thing first, this little uh, the clip here, which I believe is just connected directly to ground. I don't believe that goes anywhere. Yep, that just bolts right up to the case saw. So it's just a simple uh, wire clip. I'll hook, clean that up real nice. All right, I'll zoom in a little here, here show you this. You can see there, this is the brushes. And those brushes are right on top of that motor. Darthys are in much better shape than these are. So that's, uh, that's almost ready to be start eating up the commutator here. So the, uh, if I do decide to hold on to this motor, which I, I will, just for uh, having spare, I'll have to replace those brushes. Got the end cap off. The whole body comes out as well, hopefully. Yep, there it goes. I got my brushes popping off. Now somewhere in here will be that wire. So we got that off so you can see that wire coming down and inside and it looks like it runs all the way through and solders up to this guy. Oop, you can't see that at all. Runs all the way through the body and solders up right there. So what I think I'm going to do here is steal this wire. It seems to be in, in pretty good shape. We'll, uh, we'll take it apart just to make sure, check it out, make sure it's not uh, frayed or kinked or anything because I don't believe I have anything that's going to substitute for that. I might. We'll see what happens here. I'll uh, keep going. Notice here too that I've got the parking brake. That's this piece, this circular piece, and the cover here are separate. So I've got it marked in tape here, and I don't really need that now. But what that'll tell me is where the parking brake should be set so that the windshield wipers, when they park on the car, park in the correct place and they're not stopping in the middle of the windshield. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this cover off so I can get this wire out of here. And, uh, and see how it looks and maybe I'll just use this whole entire cover right here. I zoomed in pretty close here. This is the wire that I'm going to be desoldering. I've got some wicking uh, material here. It's just a, essentially a copper braid and it'll suck the solder up. Got a hot soldering iron and uh, just going to touch this wicking braid onto that existing solder and 50 year old plus solder. Just get it out of there. Wire's loose. I'll lift this out, get it out of the way of the wire, and uh, get this brake, parking brake thing loose. I'll show you how that looks. Not too crazy about the shape that the wire or the parking brake assembly is here. The wire's uh, pinched down here. It was underneath the, the uh, electromagnet, and it's just all kind of cracked, and I'm just uh, leery for its use. So I've got the original, and I've got a new piece of wire right here, which is more than long enough. So I'm going to uh, solder that guy in. So the wire is going to solder up here and then there's like a little catch here just to kind of keep it stable. So we'll go ahead and we'll line it up. I'll pre-tin the landing pad here. Get some solder on there so it's ready to accept more solder. So another, and essentially what you want to do with the wire is you do what's called tinning it and it fills the, all the little braids up with solder kind of solidifies it a little bit but it just makes it a little easier to solder and it helps the heat transfer so that you don't have to apply heat for so long that you start to melt the plastic and everything so I'm going to do that off camera real quick alright so that should be good enough I'll clean it up a little bit 
bend that little tab over to grab in there and then fish it through the motor and get it wired up in there. I ended up not being too crazy about that wire so I cut it. So right now it doesn't have a park. But uh, it is wired up, it will work without park. So right now I've got it set at about three amps and 12 volts. And you can see that that's how it rotates. So what happens is as that arm moves in and out, like I showed you on the other one, it sends that cable in and out, which is translated as a rotational uh, direction on the other guy. So I have soldered the parking brake wire, which feeds through there. Not through there, that's a screw hole. Don't go the wire through there. Ask me how I know. And um, I found that it's easier. Again, ask me how I know. I found that it's easier to solder it up here first and then go to the parking brake. You can see that there might be some residual wire on there, which I've got to get off and try this again. All right, all done. Got this wired up, a little bit of relief in there. I got this set about where I think it should be. On a side note, the power supply here, I don't know how to, how to really define it, if it's self-finding self whether or not it's going to be a constant voltage or a constant current. But what's kind of cool about it, if I turn the current down to about two amps or so and start the motor, motor runs, you can see that the voltage is only about seven volts or so. As I turn the current up, you might be able to hear the motor get faster. You can see the voltage come up. And then eventually it's going to find its sweet spot right about there. It kicks over to a constant voltage now. So before it was constant current, now it's about constant voltage and it's running at about 2.8 amps. So no matter what I do with adjusting the current, it eventually, it doesn't do anything. It goes back to about 2 amps. So this thing's drawing about 2.8 amps with essentially no load whatsoever. And according to the workshop manual, like I had said, it's about 2.7 to about 3.2, 3.4 amps or so. So I'm happy, with the, I'm happy with the health of the motor. It seems to be proper. What you're looking at here, part number 30, that's a windshield wiper motor. This guy way over here, number 31, that's the windshield wiper motor switch. The way that the wiper motor works is this wire that's coming down here into pin 1, that's your green wire, excuse me, into pin 2, the green wire, that's ultimately connected to the battery and just sits there with a 12 volt potential on and plugged into the motor. And then you've got this one tap over here that's not labeled with a pin, that goes to ground. And I'll show you, that's that little, that little uh, single electrical connector that goes into the screw. I'll show you that here in a second. And then the other wired pin comes out of pin one, travels down, goes to the windshield wiper switch, and then goes to ground. So when you want the windshield wipers to come on, you take the switch to on, closing that, completing the path for current, through the motor from pin 2 to pin 1 to ground, current flows and the motor goes roundy roundy. The parking brake works by when you release the switch or turn the wiper switch off that destroys this path for ground but you still have this path for ground go into that tap. So the case is connected to the car and grounded so essentially what that's doing is is providing a path for current through the casing of the motor where the gears are and where that parking brake little hole or little uh, cap thing is provides that path for current until that cutout in the parking brake comes around destroys that path for current and then the, and then the wipers stop and that's how they park in the direction. Show you the setup right here this is that wire spade that I was telling you about that's just sitting there and that's connected to the negative on the bat or on the uh, power supply and then this positive here is connected to the positive on the power supply and the power supply is giving me output so the power supply is on so when you take the wiper switch to on you essentially shut this right here and it provides a path to, path to ground through the car and the windshield wiper will turn so what I'm doing right now right there is providing that path for current now this is a little cheesy, it's not going through the switch obviously, but I'm making it like the screwdriver is a switch and I'm grounding it to the case. And that case is going over to this tab right here and then returning to the power supply. Now when I release 
and remove this screwdriver, you'll hear the motor run for just a second or two until it gets to where that parking brake is and then the motor's going to stop. Do that again. That was one was kind of quick. That was a little better. So it doesn't run very long at all, but it does definitely run after I remove the screwdriver. All right, so that's how it works. So now I can put the windshield wiper box in there or the, or the cabling in there and set it up and test it and find my ground and rotate this guy, rotate that to line where that uh, breaks the electrical connection up correctly and then I can park my windshield wipers right. Hopefully that makes sense. It's a little, uh, took me a minute to come through it, but hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. Windshield wiper box tube whatever you want to call that thing comes through here you can see one of the boxes sticking up there and it just routes up underneath there this is a real pain to get at if uh, there's absolutely anything else in there so I'm just going to route it now go ahead and screw these guys in get them tight I also have the grommet this is a unique grommet I think it's the only uh, only one of its type as far as uh, the, the pass-through grommets go when I get that on there I'll show you that a little closer so this is just a matter of getting stuff fit and screwing it in. It's not very complicated. Well, I got it in there. This is one of those where everything needs to be loose. The mounting brackets here, this nut here, the, uh, the wheel boxes, the pipes for the wheel boxes, everything needs to be loose and then you kind of tighten it all up. And uh, that one seal that I had did not work. Too big. So I'm not quite sure what happened there, but I've used a, a regular one inch grommet that I have that has uh, the pipe throughs. I got a bunch of those. But hey, it works. A little loud though. <laughs> 